Hello and welcome to Coffee with Maxwell. Today we're going to talk about the lunga. This is a naturally processed Sudan Rume from Le Cafe Granja Esperanza in Colombia. I'm a big fan of Sudan Rume, but maybe I'm an even bigger fan of a lunga. The best way to understand a lungo is to start with espresso. Really, espresso, I would imagine everybody watching this has an understanding of. It's a short drink brewed under pressure which creates crema at a high concentration. What is the average concentration of espresso? Well, I think it's fair to say that in the specialty world it's probably between 8 and 10 percent. 10 percent being on the high side. And what does that percentage mean? That is not extraction, that is just concentration. So it means that if the espresso is 10% coffee, it is 90% water. Let's compare that to a filter coffee, which couldn't be further away from this. A filter coffee is typically 1 to 1.5% strength. So generally, what we play around with in specialty coffee is two extreme strengths. Sensory studies actually show that a lot of people find espresso too overwhelming, too strong. It's harder to discern the differences. We'll get onto this in a little bit. And filter coffee, on the other hand, can be too delicate, too nuanced. Now, espresso is partly so popular in places like the UK because of steamed milk. It's the base for many other drinks. But don't get me wrong, I love great espresso. I think you can understand lungo when you understand ristretto. Now, for a long time, a lot more people have heard of a ristretto, uh, sometimes called a double rizzy banger, uh, if you're Australian. And, and really what this was, was a shorter form. So let's just break this down to key fundamentals. We put a dose of coffee into a basket, like this. This is then compacted, you could distribute it in multiple ways. Uh, you then introduce water, water that's driven by a pump, to this dose. The dose is what creates the resistance. The water can't get out the other side without going through the coffee. And what we do when we dial in coffee is we play around with the grind, we might play around with temperature, we might play around with pressure. But really, at a pressure or a variable pressure, we pull water, not a lot of it, through this compacted bed of coffee to create espresso. Now typically, espresso is probably going to be a ratio of one to two. Depending on your preference, that could swing to one to 1.5 or 1 to 2.5. I think beyond that, it's not really as recognisable as espresso anymore. Let's come back to these three drinks, espresso, ristretto, and lungo. Now, because the majority of drinks prepared on the espresso machine are espresso, that is nearly always, especially on a traditional grinder with a hopper in it, what the coffee is dialed into. So you adjust the grind, everything you're doing to be optimal at whatever your espresso recipe is. Now, if you were then going to go and pull the ristretto with this, you're going to pull less water through, which means with all the other variables staying the same, you're probably going to under-extract under -extract the coffee. There's probably not a harder drink to make than a balanced, well-extracted espresso, because the less water you use, the more challenging it is. The margin for error goes down. You've got to get a bunch of coffee dissolved quickly into a small amount of liquid. There's things that can really help, like long pre-infusions, different pressures, distribution, etc. I remember a long time ago uh, when the coffee scene in London was blooming. That's not a pun. <laughs> the blooming of coffee. <laughs> right. I went into this cafe and when I asked for a ristretto at the time, which now I'm probably a little bit ashamed to ask for, the barista actually uh, changed the grind, ground the coffee through to grind finer to help extract it as a ristretto. I mean, incredible, kind of ridiculous, really, the wasted coffee, but, but also you've got to admire their commitment to trying to represent that recipe properly. So I knew about ristrettos and I knew about espressos. Generally, I became a little bit uh, less keen on ristrettos as I realised that the small amount of liquid made it harder to extract a fully balanced beverage, and it often meant uh, it was harder to brew really aromatic, bright, coffees that aren't roasted too dark as a ristretto, okay? Which is why I personally, because let's just be clear, I love aromatic, bright coffee. I will take aromatics, complexity over body any day. That's my preference. 
And then the Lungo, I heard about the Lungo, and generally this was just an awful drink. What it meant was, ah, oh, you just kept pulling water through it. You know, the mindset with the Lungo was almost, that's almost as bad as somebody just pulling another espresso through the same used pump. Almost. And again, any Lungo, well, I'd never had anyone change the grind for a Lungo. The Lungo was just pulling an espresso, over extracting it at that fine grind, etc. Fast forward a few years, the EK43 becomes uh, extremely sought after because of a barista performance, a World Barista Championship. And part of this performance was brewing filter strength coffee. So go, let's go back to that 1% strength through one of these grinders. Now, although that was kind of cool, I was kind of like, okay, but I really quite like filter coffee. So it doesn't really seem to add anything to it. It's like, okay, cool, I can make a filter coffee through this grinder, through an espresso machine. I like what that's challenged, but really what it got excited me about is the no man's land in between espresso and filter. And for years, I have really not liked Americanos uh, and recommended against them. Uh, and now I think I know why, right? I think it's because you have to grind very fine, which damages the coffee to brew at a high strength. But at a high strength, some of that damage could or could not be positive, as in, you can get a high concentration result that tastes pretty good. There is some interesting science to show that if I gave you the same liquid brewed at different concentrations, so a high concentration and a low concentration and a medium concentration, you would have very different preferences. Nothing's changed about what you're drinking, just the concentration. Things you quite like at a low concentration, uh, you may not like at a high concentration. Citric acid, for example, at a low concentration is very pleasant. A uh, high concentration is sour and overwhelming. And so I became interested in this idea that maybe you could brew the coffee to be a strength between espresso and filter. And so we started playing around with Lungos and we would change the pressure on the machine. Now, just to be quick on this, I, on a normal machine, which this is not, uh, something like a, a, a fixed pump machine where the pressure isn't a feedback loop at the group head. The pressure is literally how hard you ask a pump to work, right? There's a separate conversation on what the actual pressure is at a pump because it's relative to resistance. But on, an, on a linear PB, like the one we've got over at uh, our new pop-up, I think slightly lower pressures help extraction anyway, especially Lighter roast coffees, more dense, more difficult to extract from, high density coffees, etc. So I'm definitely in the cab of pro six to seven bar espresso shots, right? Before we talk about pressure, we need to understand grind. So if I want to pull, so let's just go back to basics. For a filter coffee, you grind considerably coarser than for an espresso coffee, right? So if you've got coarse and you've got fine, it makes sense to pull a lungo that you would grind somewhere between the two. Okay, it's not as much water as filter, so not as coarse. Uh, it's not a small amount of water as espresso, so not as fine. So you would go somewhere in the middle. But, now let's come back to pressure. For these kind of systems, that's a problem. Because if you grind coarser, you create less resistance. The system is trying to hit a resistance at the pump. And so the pump goes into overdrive, trying to create that pressure. So when I pull lungos on a system like this, I actually ask the system to go all the way down to one bar. That's two bar, one bar. Uh, but actually the pump works pretty hard to even hit one bar at such a coarse grind. And what I found with lungos is the grind's so coarse that flow rate isn't going to indicate extraction for you, right? So what's very common with espresso, you grind a little bit finer, you get a slower shot. You grind a little bit coarser, and what this ends up doing for espresso is making it makes dialing become a lot about time and flow. It was part of the reason it took so long for people to become okay with uh, grinders that can brew very high extractions at a faster flow rate because it just, you know, frazzled the mind. It was like, no, 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 that must be under extracted, it's too fast. And then you take uh, a refractometer reading and it's very high, higher than it was when you were brewing on another grinder in 35 seconds. What's the ratios I would approach with a longer?
Our espresso here at Clonner and Smalls is 15.5 grams in a 15 gram basket. Big fan of lower doses. I made one the other day with 12 grams that I really enjoyed. I feel like a 12 gram espresso is perfect for me. Anyway, 15.5 grams in, and it depends, play around. I feel like with really aromatic coffees, I feel like they're a bit longer, uh, and less so with other coffees. Put it out to somewhere between 35, 40 grams. Right, so we're playing around in that one to 2.25 to 2.75 ratio. And that ratio is the one represents the ground weight of the ground coffee. The 2.25 to 2.75 represents the weight of the beverage at the end. And then when we make a lungo, we're literally doubling the weight out. The amount of coffee going in is gonna be the same into that basket, but we're gonna go all the way up to 80 grams. And so what I'm trying to do here is get a half strength version of the espresso. So I think now I've probably explained where a lungo sits between filter and espresso. Hopefully indicated why maybe people thought a lungo was a bad thing, but actually when you think about changing variables for it, it should just be a concentration to make coffee at, right? Now we've agreed that, I want to go on to why I think it could possibly be the easiest way to make great coffee. Let's caveat that with, you need an espresso machine. So, <laughs> I'm going to say the most accessible way to make coffee, but the easiest. Everything that I've done in coffee since I got into coffee, I'm interested in breaking things down to fundamentals and ultimately finding the biggest levers that have an impact on the way something tastes. So for example, you could get caught up with a detail over here, which is interesting. It's like, oh, if I tweak that, uh, it makes it 0.5% times better. But what's interesting is, rather than focusing on these tiny differences over here, could we go over here, change something fundamental about what we're doing, which suddenly jumps ahead of these differences? So rather than getting something a little bit better here, we can go back to fundamentals, change something, and just skip to the front of the queue and make something that tastes great. I really do believe, you know, coffee's so hard, right, and it's complicated, that if you can find ways to make it easier to pursue great coffee, that doesn't dumb the coffee down, uh, it just increases your chances of exploring brilliant coffee. So why do I think the Lungo is the easiest way to make a great tasting cup of coffee? I think it's probably three things. It is concentration, it is water, and it is grind. Now, if you gave me the situation where you said, Maxwell, someone is going to make you a cup of coffee. They've never made coffee before. I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't want to drink crap coffee. So I want to give them the easiest chance of making me a good coffee, because I'm going to drink it, right? Now, of course, I'm going to be like, well, <laughs> let's, let's give them the most expensive coffee possible. <laughs> First of all, let's start there. Now, I can't control the other variables, right? So let's say I'm not in control of anything else other than the coffee I give them. So I don't know what the water is. I don't know what the grinder is. I don't know what the espresso machine is, but that's the equipment. And I think, okay, what's the easiest way to make this taste great? I would, you've guessed, ask them to make a lunga. Let's start with concentration and water together. Espresso concentration is very high. This means that anything that went wrong uh, is particularly unpleasant, right? So if the water was really soft and I gave them a light roasted grey coffee, that's gonna struggle for sourness, right? They're also gonna to have to grind pretty fine to be able to extract the coffee in that short volume, which means any problems with the grinder, I don't know which grinder they've got, are gonna be exacerbated. If they get the grind wrong, uh, I could have all sorts of problems. I could have extreme under extraction, I could have uh, you know, the, the, the classic bell curve where you get a ton of micro channels uh, and extractions all over the place. And all of this is going to be magnified, so you can have a very intense drink that could be really bad uh, and really unpleasant and not reflect that great coffee at all. Distribution becomes really important, flow paths become really important. Oh, what a nightmare, right? Let's not put that on uh, someone. And the other end of the spectrum, we go, okay, well, maybe the easiest way to make someone a cup of coffee is filter coffee. Right, like a cafetiere. How hard can that be? Well, the problem there is, I don't know what the water is. OK, 
okay? So at that dilute strength, if you haven't got the water composition right, either way you can have a flat, underwhelming drink, or you can have a sour, thin drink, and it's at such a low concentration that unless everything pops, it's just super, you know, how many filter coffees have you had? I've had loads, where it was a great coffee that went in, I'm just like, meh, just kind of tastes watery, uh, don't really know what it is, doesn't pop. So then you've got the lungo in the middle, okay? Now that concentration is a real safe concentration. It's not so weak that the coffee can taste flat and be lost, and it's not so strong that any problems with the brew could be massively unpleasant, right? But also, you're less likely to even have problems with the brew because of the grind. Grinding fine is difficult, right? Grind, grinding fine creates static, it creates heat, it creates all of these problems, right? And then the brewing of an espresso at, with the challenge of grinding fine, you put the two together, oh, I mean, problems, right? But then you go to that strength of a lunga, it's easier to extract evenly from a coarser grind. The coarser grind in and of itself damages the coffee less. And the concentration means we're gonna taste what's great about that coffee. So I've got this Sudan Rume here, which I've been drinking throughout this video. And it just tastes brilliant. There's less dialing, correct? The margin for error is wider. The humble lunga could be one of the best ways to brew coffee. So it's also interesting from a roast point of view. In the scenario I gave you, I said that I provided the coffee, but what if I didn't provide the coffee and you know, the roaster roasts quite light or they roast a bit dark? Both of those things are gonna be bigger problems at the other strengths, right? So a light roast espresso is gonna be super sour at this strength. I'm also mitigating against variance in roast. And at a darker roast, if it's a little bit of a developed filter, that filter strength could taste really flat. This won't taste flat. There's enough concentration here that it's gonna have pop, whatever it is. There's some fascinating research that shows that, consumer research, that even though we might look at a bag and pick, it's a bit like the flavor note episode, right? <laughs> you choose on the flavor notes, but blind you might not choose the same coffee that you chose based on the flavor notes on the bag. It's the same with strength. It's like, okay, a lot of people will opt for strong, bold, you know, I, you know, intense, I guess. There's lots of psychology going on there, which we're not gonna dig into. But actually on a blind table, we'll, we'll pick something in the middle. And so the lingo, the lingo is that middle strength. It's just crazy to me when the lingo has so much going for it that hardly anyone makes one. And there we go. Thank you for joining me on my lingo odyssey. Now please do play around with brewing lingos at home or in the cafe. Try and come to it with no predefined expectations and just focus on cup quality and how easy it is to make great coffee taste great. If you enjoyed this episode, please do like, share, subscribe and support me on my Patreon. Thanks.